Oh yeah, that's what it's there for. It's there to keep the table nice and clean. Okay, great. Okay. All right, so uh, welcome to the Ocean County Artist Guild. Uh, this uh, program, this class, uh, acrylics, is brought to you in part by a grant from the Ocean County Cultural and Heritage Commission in association with the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. Our website is www.ocartistguild.org. I invite you to come and check us out. Uh, check out the wonderful programs that we have for the artists, local arts community and beyond. We're located in beautiful Island Heights, New Jersey. You can contact us at 732-270-3111 by phone, or you can also send us an email at info at ocartistguild.org. Again, thank you for joining us. Um, and with that, we are going to get started. Okay, last time we met, uh, during the first session, we toned our canvases and we put in a rule of thirds grid and we went and sketched in our scene and put in our grisaille or grayscale underpainting. Those of us that uh, were here for the, first, uh, for the first session are going to continue with that. Right now, our newbies are going to uh, simply uh, be uh, toning our canvases and I'm going to get the sample real quick. Okay, here we have, you know, a small version of the toned canvas. Now the ratio, we used uh, some gray paint, some medium gray, neutral gray, and with a ratio of one part gray paint to uh, two parts water, uh, approximately, we put a thin uh, layer of acrylic paint on our canvas. And if you notice here, what we have is it doesn't completely seal the canvas. We want to see through to uh, the canvas. We still want to retain that wonderful texture. And let's see, there we go. Let's get some more light on this. Great, more light, there we go. And next what we're going to do is we're going to put in a rule of thirds grid. Okay, so I'm gonna get ready for that while our newbies are still putting uh, their first layer of paint to tone their canvas. So what I might do for the uh, rule of thirds grid here is I'm gonna take some uh, gray paint plus I might mix in just a little bit of Mars black just to darken it a little bit so you can see it on top of the uh, gray. And really these are the only two colors we need for quite a while because um, you know it's we're also gonna we also might be using these colors to, um, you know, to do our sketch. Before I put on the rule of thirds grid, though, what I want to talk about is I used a neutral gray for my ground. Now, depending on what, uh, you know, what your subject is or what your composition is, what colors, you may or may want to choose a different color. Uh, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, you know, there are are different reasons, you know, for uh, picking other colors that could help it enhance our color scheme. Uh, but if you put gray on, that'll work for just about anything. It's it's a nice, you know, all-purpose color, and it's a neutral, 
and it just provides a medium uh, value on our canvas. It makes it a little bit less intimidating to look at. Sometimes when we're staring at a black canvas, you know, it can be, you know, uh, it, it might seem a little bit overwhelming. So this gives us a, you know, a gray value that's already there for us to look at and consider and compare as well so that uh, we, it's easier to decide what kind of lights and darks we might need. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, now for, you're going to need a palette knife to mix. I have some water and I'm going to use, you know, a round brush, a round brush. Uh, a smaller round brush. I mean, this one's a little bit larger. It's a number four round. You can see now it's a round brush because the ferrule of the brush or the metal part of the brush is um, cylindrical, and which means that the bristles of, of the uh, brush that are set into that ferrule are also cylindri cylindrical, and they are tapered to a point. So that helps us, you know, get some more uh, details and, and line work. You could also use a um, you could also use a rigger brush or a liner brush, which is a round brush that has longer bristles. And I don't have that with me, but that's okay. Um, that is actually hold on. Do I have it in there? Now I think I put it with my other stuff, but that's okay. All right. Okay, great. So let's take a look. Before we get started, we're going to take a look at what Karen has. That's good. That's fine. That's great the way it is. And okay, we can go ahead and we can do we can do our uh, rule of thirds grid, or we can actually use a blow dryer to dry that a little bit. Why don't we do that? We're going to do that first. I'm going to get a blow dryer for you. Ooh. Can't forget this. Actually, hmm. let me put this table over here. Okay, I'm going to set up the uh, blow dryer over here for you. So you can just, since there's an outlet nearby. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Because in my head there was a Great. mill house. It's not a mill house, but I wanted to do a mill house. And yeah. a storage thing there. That's right. So you know what? I did this big blocky, and now I have to figure out how to. So I had to paint over everything to get That's rid of okay. that. And now I just have to figure out how to turn this into what I want it to be, which is an old grist mill. Now, what you can also do is. Like you can paint over this and then paint some of that green back on it so that, uh -huh. because if you can see here. If there's a lot going in through there. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah like we want to be able to see that red. A little more red back up in here. Yeah. I would actually, I would cover it. Just cover it and then put the green back on top of it. Wait, say that again. I don't. Like I would paint like what's farthest away first and then put the branches on top of that. So you can layer. So, I mean, I was going to leave the building like this. Okay. I think I should have more building out here. You could leave it like that. that. It's up to you. Yeah. You know what? You could interpret it that way as well. Yeah. I'm just trying to simplify because I feel like I got way too complicated right. for my very yeah. first project. Here. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I still have to add back all this greenery down here. I had to expand everything. Yeah, that's fine. Windows and doors and things that 
Yeah. This is cars. This bit goes. Yeah. I, you know, you could focus on whatever details you want to put in here and get that set. Um, decide what you want to put in here. I think that's just going to be some yeah. green field and blue sky back there. I'm going to add some, some I'm going to bring this blue down into here. Well, you probably wouldn't see that. No? No. Yeah, that, you would see lighter. Field. Yeah. Like, it could be a, a field that's lit up. Uh-huh. Uh, behind there, okay. but I wouldn't say that it would be sky because, okay. yeah. So it would just be lighter shades of green back in there. Well, actually, there's earth tones. There is because there's a road back there. Yeah, but I just. I mean, there is some green. brighter green here, uh -huh. but then there's it's earthy and then okay. it's great. It becomes grayed out, well, maybe even a little bit of violet. Yeah. And it's far. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I just wanted to get rid of all of that. So. Yeah, so I would keep it simple that way and, and think of it as there's really like these bands of color. There's a green yeah. band, an earth tone band, and a gray band. Unfortunately, I already have the earth tone band in here. Yeah. my color wash. Mm -hmm. I just need to. Right. Yeah, I would, you know, try to retain that because that would look really nice. I mean, you could layer a little bit of gray in, in here, but other than that, it, that'll look okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I gotta figure out how to build this, you know, this seawall kind of thing that's here. Yes. Like it's out. almost kind of like a, a bulkhead type. Yep. Yeah. Which makes sense if it's an old mill, you know, it sits on right. the wall like that. Yeah, it's actually, it almost, you know, it looks like planks. Mm -hmm. There's like yeah. planking or like, uh, they're probably, it's probably not actually planks, but like more like, uh, they're probably yeah, big timbers or something. Timbers, yeah. It looks like a like stacked timbers that are staggered a little bit, which would be easy enough to make an impression of. Yeah. You, you know, you don't have to get too detailed. For just a nice gray stone wall right in there. You know what? Add a little gray in there. You can you can do that too. You can make it that way. You can change it, mm -hmm. change it to what you want it to to look like. You know, just because. The picture shows it your reference shows it a different way mm -hmm. you can edit and change whatever you want to your liking i mean because it's it's your painting it's your world <laughs> right it's your world great okay all right so we have our canvases dry okay so now i'm going to take some of this black and just mix it a little bit into my gray just to darken it up a little bit because I want to be able to see I want to be able to see the grid on my uh, canvas but I don't want it to be so dark that it becomes impossible to cover okay so here we go get myself a paper towel and I'm going to take some thin paint and what I need to do first is, okay, so I want to divide my canvas in thirds both ways, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eyeball it and see if I'm right. I'll just put a couple of marks on top, and let's see. I'm going to use my paintbrush as a measure, see if I can get over. Oh, okay, so I did pretty good there. All right, so I made it. I was maybe just a little bit off there. Okay, so now what I can do is, since I have that measured off, I can go and make those marks, one in the middle and one at the bottom. One in the middle and one at the bottom. You know, just to get that approximation. And, you know, you could either use another long paintbrush to help you, or what I have here is, where is it? Aha. I'm going to use a telescoping, uh, it's actually a telescoping back scratcher. Isn't that funny? And uh, but <laughs> had it laying around the house. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'll use it as a mall stick. A mall stick is a little tool that is a tool that artists use to help them, you know, either draw state 
uh, straight lines or help steady their wrist when they're doing detail work. So here we go. This is what I'm going to use it for. Here we go. To make my little, my little rule of thirds in my grid. See, I might have been a little bit off, but that's okay. Right? Okay. So I did my verticals. It was a little bit off over here. Let me, I can erase that. Okay, so I divided it vertically in thirds. Now I want to divide it horizontally, and I just kind of re I repeat the same thing. Okay, well, maybe I'll turn, I could turn my canvas the other way if that's easier for me. And here I'm going to make, let's see, it looks like it might be about here. So I'm not going to, I'm not measuring anything really. I'm trying, I'm just going to eyeball it first. And let's see, can I get over two more times? Yep, I did pretty good. So that's where, that's what I'm going with. All right. And let's see. So here. Go in the middle. And then go in the end to the end. There we go. A little off, right? That's okay. Draw it. Now, when acrylics are still wet, you can just, and you make a mistake, you just wipe, you know, you can just wipe it off with a damp cloth. No problem. Great. Okay, so now we have our grid. We have our little grid. And what this does for us, okay, if, if you're not familiar with the rule of thirds, I'm going to make some little circles around the corners of the little the square or the rectangle that's formed in the middle of my picture plane. And the rule of thirds says that my focal point or my point of interest should touch any one of the four corners here, okay? And also, if we have a landscape with a horizon line, you don't want it to be right smack in the You either want it to be above or below because we never want to divide our picture plane in half because then it gives the feeling of two separate paintings. So uh, that is also... Um, some good advice uh, for your uh, composition for a landscape, well, or or any composition. You never want to divide it exactly in half, unless there's some compelling reason to do it. Now, of course, rules are made to be broken, and I'm not even going to call this a rule. It's just a, I'm going to say it's a suggestion because you know it it just makes for a better composition. So. We're going to let this dry a little bit and we're going to come around and see if we need help with this. Now our next step, if you have this down pat, your next step would be to maybe use this same shade of gray or maybe add a little bit more black to it if you want to just to put in the gesture of your landscape. Now I'll turn mine around and get out my little reference photo that I used prior to help with the composition. Actually, here we have, let's see. I'll actually change my screen. Okay, so here I changed my screen so that I have my reference photo right there that I've been using. And let's move my palette over so that it's not in 
in the way. There we go. Great. All right, I am left-handed, but I'll move this over so that it's next to uh, next to the uh, to the palette. Here we go. Great. I actually could move that photograph over, but you know, we're going to keep that keep that there. Great. Okay. So we're going to hang on for a few minutes here until we until we're all ready to proceed. Lots of uh, eyeballing <laughs> experience. Eyeball first, and then we could check ourselves by, um, like, if we. You know, let me. I won't touch your stuff because I don't want to. Because we got to be conscious about this. But let's just say, okay. So say this is my paintbrush, and I use it as a unit of measure, right? Just like this. Then, let's see. Can I get a across it oh so maybe i was a little bit short no that's from me before <laughs> oh okay um yeah so that's how you could check yourself you want to make sure that i mean we eyeball it and then we see if we can get to the end if we repeat it two more times that's so i gotta go a little bit longer let's say if i go that long let's see what do i get am i Oh, okay, so that's good. So you can make that mark there. Make another mark there. And let's see. Oh, how did I get to be short? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, just move it over a little bit and you'll be good. Yeah. Actually, what's on the bottom looks pretty good, right? You know, and if it's off a little bit, that's okay. It doesn't matter. You know, we just had, if you got to add a little bit of space, in the painting, that's fine. I try not to to measure. We don't want to get drive ourselves crazy measuring. And this line doesn't. It can be. It's kind of dark. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. We're gonna be covering with it with so many layers of paint anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, you definitely want variations. So what you could do is mix mix your variations first so that you have them ready to go and you can uh, execute that quickly. Yeah. Now let's see. We'll get this right. If you get a paper towel and uh, you can you can wipe wipe off if you're off. All right. So we need it to be. Oh. Actually, I think I already got, all right, that, and that, and that. All right, so it's a little bit shorter of that. So it's probably more like there, but that's all right. Just this one? Yeah. And then I can just wipe the other one. Yeah, you might have to scrub a little bit. Yeah, because it does dry fast, but I 
to be able to use a wet. I would wet it, dip it in. Definitely dip it in. What's nice about, you see, if you look in your color study and how you, it's, it's actually a little bit on the warmer side. Yep. That looks good. Then I just changed my mind and made it a gray spot. Oh, okay. That's all right. <laughs> you can do that. It doesn't really match anything else in here. As long as you, as long as you make that gray with the other colors that I are mean, in your painting, the then thinking. it's then it's fine because then it's harmonious. So that's okay. Yep. I think you're you're good. You know what? While this is wet, I would take that off too because that's a little bit too far. Yeah. All right, we're going to get this. Oh, wrong way. Did I get the, I think what I said was that yeah, it was maybe a little bit short. Let's push this out. Actually, here we go. It's about right. This is the one you came up with. Yeah, yeah. So I would say I'm gonna get a. Let me get a brush. Let's get a brush. I think that's pretty close. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Good. Good, good. You know, we kind of connect those dots. Yep, you can do that. I think that's about right. Close enough. Okay, another tip is in order to, you know, if you're working on palette paper um, and instead of a stay wet palette, um, a good idea is to, if you want to keep your, your paints moist, just get one of these little mister bottles and you can mist your paints to keep the skin from forming on the top of the paint. It's especially helpful, you know, when you're traveling with, with your acrylic paint. If you're traveling light, especially if, if you're going to use acrylics for working outdoors, you know, it's good to, uh, in plain air, if you're painting in plain air, where you want to use acrylics, but, you know, it's a windy day uh, and the paint dries really quick or it's not, not damp out, this uh, spritzer bottle can really, really help you. And actually, this spritzer probably came with, probably came from the dollar store in like a set of, you know, sometimes you get those sets of travel bottles. And I like these because it gives you a fine mist. Um, you know, you if you use, buy any one of those larger bottles, you know, it, it's more of a stream and it's, it's way too much water. These little fine misters give you uh, just the right amount without, uh, making your paint too watery.
Okay. So I guess I can have to you. It, it keeps drying so much darker than I mean that was so much lighter just in the Yes. It dries so dark. So yeah. I'm just gonna let that dry and see how Yeah. You can always glaze some more light lights over it if you find that it's too dark. Yep. No problem. And then the other thing I need to know, is there some technique for how to how to prove that this is reflection since I paint everything so ridiculously dark it doesn't look like reflection. It looks like let's take a look at your picture here. Okay, so the best way to suggest that that's a reflection would have been in your brush strokes, in your brushwork. Mm -hmm. Now, mortar, you know, it's, it's horizontal, like, um, it, you know, it's, it's always, right. so. And then the brush strokes should have been opposite. Streak. Oh, across. Yeah. Okay. What, like, the method would be to try to work quick and wet mm -hmm. with it okay and i mean you can work and in, in sections like if you put you know your water and you like say say in this section we we go back in this water and we paint it in and well first you have to have all these colors mixed your water plus your your tree colors right mm -hmm. okay you need to have at least on the edge here where you want it to blend mm -hmm. You need to have some of that water uh, underneath the colors of the water underneath, right, exactly. and then. So that's got to get put back in. Here. Right, and then. So there really is none of it in here. I mean, there's no blue sky anywhere. That's just such a dense mass of green. It's just, you know, I was really struggling with. Yeah, I can see see what you mean. And then when you put when you put that color in, mm -hmm. it's more of, you know kind of streaking it in okay. and then when you're done you know putting in or streaking in all those colors mm -hmm. then take a damp brush and pull it down drag it. and drag it down yep because right at the moment i just have this big dark mess you know and i've, I've somehow managed to make this curve here that doesn't exist and i don't even know how that happened well, I think you were more or less, you know, putting in the value, which is, it, which, you know, there is that, it was really, it's the shape of the, the shadows that you were seeing. I think that. I think it has to. Do, it's it's more with the technique of of applying the paint, right. which which, which I'm going to show you, <laughs> huh? Which I don't know anything about. Yeah, to, we we will. Much. Yeah, you know what? I have water too. I'll show you how I'm going to address my water, okay. and then I'll give you a better idea of how you can. Uh, address my water. Uh, yeah, I mean, but you you know you already have you know a good layer of color on top of it, which is good. You know we can. I mean that's not. That's not a wasted effort Everything by any so means. Mm -hmm. Everything's just so damn dark. I, mean, I, I still need to fill this yeah. back in, but I just painted this. Well, like needs more layers. Actually, I mean, compared to your photograph, you're, you're, you actually lightened up, yeah. lightened up a lot. Yeah. Um, you could go, obviously, you can go a little bit lighter in some areas over here, yeah. but that was very dark, uh -huh. and that's also what makes it very beautiful. So I think that it's more the value contrast that you're not seeing. Like you could actually go even darker here in some of these shadows and you need to lighten up more over here. But that's, those are like top level details anyway. Your base is great. I mean, your actual, the actual hues that are there are wonderful. Yep. Yeah. So you have a great base on this painting. Yeah, but all the other stuff we can we can we can do that. We can correct that to make this look less of a continuation between what's on top and more like a reflection. I set myself pretty difficult because these are real leaves. This isn't. Yes. 
this over here is reflected. Right. But we want what we want to do is we want to do the reflection underneath up to this point, and then you could add uh, more texture on top of that once we're done with the you okay. know finishing off the reflection. So I'll just stop working for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just for me. I'm going to get her started with sketching in. And then I'm going to go back to the grisaille and start. I'm going to mix up some colors and start working on uh, reflection. So, Karen, now that we have our grid, okay, what we do is we have uh, our reference. We have our reference here. Um, Let me put it on both sides. That looks good. That That's okay. Yeah. Even if it's a little bit off, it's okay. We just need a general okay. guide to help us lay out our composition. So, okay. No, don't, don't twitch. No, we don't want that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, okay, so I have my, my painting, I have my reference, and now I want to start sketching in. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit darker here so that you can see it better on my screen. I'm just going to use a little bit darker gray, and I'm going to go ahead, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, I'm just going to mark where... Yeah, it's actually, I want to use, I don't, I'm kind of going to like scumble it in more or less because I don't really want, I don't want any really harsh lines because, you know, this is, you know, it's a landscape. There's a lot of natural forms in it. So I just want to mark where the major, uh, the major, parts and elements are. I got some, just the major shapes and the value, you know, marking where those values are that they make. It's going to have more of an abstract look um, because, again, um, my goal is to just Mark it's going to be very uh, it's going to be very sketchy. I'm going to mark where you know the changes in value in my reflection are. Don't really. I mean, there's there's even some houses. There's some houses in the background here. Um, I can just mark them in general, where the rooftops are, maybe. But I'm not going to go too crazy here, because I can block those shapes in with paint later. I don't really have to agonize over it. There's even some little people in here, which is cool. The people are kind of over here. I mean, I, I can always, again, I'm going to put that in later. There's like a little house over here that I can see in the distance. Maybe I'll just mark that because I want to know, you know, where I'm going to need the block in. But here, you know, you see, I, I just have a very, very general sketchy feel to this. Oh, I do want to mark uh, here. Let's see. Like that. That light area. 
I want to mark where that starts and ends because that's that's important information for me for later. Here we go. So what I'm doing, I'm more more uh, marking, you know, where the different values are that I see. And, and the shapes that those values make, that to me right now is more, more important. I'm gonna have a little bit of a land where, you know, land meets water and there's, you know, some brush over here. Maybe I'll mark that too. But again, you know, we're being, being very sketchy here because I have a lot of, you know, natural types of shapes going on here. I kind of want to maintain that ragged feel of everything that I'm seeing. And that's really all the information that I feel like I need to put in this. Now, if you, now, Karen, you have, you know, a barn, you know, some uh, and some other outbuildings that you might want to define further. And that's fine because, you you know, you have some stronger geometric shapes in yours that are more in focus. So you're going to want to address that in, in, you know, in your sketch, too, because, you know, that that matters because that's a focal point, you know, in your painting. Yes, and you can do, you know, just a ragged outline of your trees. You just want to mark where they are. You don't have to agonize over getting the shapes exactly like they are in a picture. You know, you just want a general idea of where things are as far as those types of natural elements. So I'm going to stop this particular sample here. And then, okay, I'm going to go back to, and while Karen's working on her sketch, I'm going to go back to my painting from the previous session, which was a Grisai. I'm going to do a quick rundown of the color scheme and the color study that I did for that. And we're going to go over, I'm going to take a look at how we're going to address applying uh, and glazing the color on that. So I'm going to put this aside. And actually what I'll do is, let's see, I'll put this where you can see it, Karen. And I'll put it on your table or right over here. Let's put this over here. Put this aside. We're going to get out a new new piece of palette paper. We'll bring in our grisaille here, our little grisaille, and there we go. Actually, what I'd like to do is I'm going to switch this to this side. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm moving it to that side so that I can put my palette. Paper, my palette knife, and 
here we go. I have my color study right here that I'm going to uh, put out. Okay, so let me put this next to uh, our reference photo here. And here's my little color study. Um, I decided on a, a color scheme that was complementary. Okay, so you see some violets in here and you see some, uh, some warm, warmer greens, like almost uh, like a, uh, maybe even a light turquoise in there. Um, and these colors right here on my color study are, are the ones that I'm going to focus on and mix up. And let's take a look. The colors that I used, I'm going to squeeze them out on the palette and get them mixed up. I'm going to need some white. Some cadmium yellow. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using much of that today. Definitely my crimson is going to be canacridone crimson. Some cerulean blue. And some cobalt blue. Now I'm also going to need some ivory black. I'll put that put that on the bottom here. Put that in the bottom corner. Okay. All right. So and I also want to put mud. Last time we talked about how we get color harmony and um, we achieve that by mixing a little bit of every color together that's in our palette and adding a little bit of that mud to the colors that we have that are straight out of the tube so that we have that option for a more muted palette. Great. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of mud in each of these, each pile here. And then I'm going to take a bit of each of these primaries. And put them 
mix them with some of the mud. There we go. I might need to squeeze out more. But let's just start with this. Great. Oh. We also used unbleached titanium. Okay. So we have, we have to mix a little bit of all these colors with unbleached titanium. Also with titanium white. So I'm going to line that up. So I have my options. And then of course, We want black so that we have some different values here. There we go. Okay. All right. So, all right, I'm going to mix those muddy colors in each one, but I'm going to start with a little bit of pure color first. Crimson. Cerulean blue. We do have a lot of darks in this painting. And then our cobalt blue. Great. Okay, so let's take it, let's mix it up. Now I'm not going to use any of this yellow straight. Let's mix some of this up. Bleach titanium. Okay, and I want to take a little bit of each of this, some of the muddy, and put that in. Changes it just a little bit so that we can get some harmony in here. There's a lot of dull colors. And let's get the black. 
This actually gives us a nice muted green that we can use that we mixed before. Wonderful. All right. That's really, really pink, right? We don't want really want that. I'm gonna we're gonna add mud to that in a sec. Looks much better with the unbleached titanium. Yeah. It's very useful. I like it that it's that it's muted. It's not as chalky as uh, titanium white. Hmm? Oh, yeah. 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 Mix in our muddier color here. There we go. Then, of course, we have black. It gives us a nice, rich, deep color, burgundy color. Mix a little bit of mud in there. Dull that some more. Great. Okay, so let's get these blues. No, I'm not using that straight out of the tube. I really like, I really prefer the way it looks with that unbleached titanium. We need some mud though. We need the mud. Gonna have to mix up some more mud. So I'll take some of the yellow, some of the red, and there. So get me closer to where I need to be. There we go. That nice muted some more of that. There we go. Need more of a turquoise shade, so I need to need to get that a little bit more yellow in there from the mud. And take a little bit more cobalt blue. Even that out. Ah, yes. Nice color. This is a great color right there. Love it. Okay. And we need a little bit of that mud over here. Let's muddy that. Mixing. A little bit muddier, more muted colors here. That's what we need. 
going to need a little bit more of this red in here. You know, and different, you know, different values. There we go. Let's see how we tone that down and make that more muted, more of a blue green shade. Okay, I'm gonna mix some more mud in this pile here. Running out of mud. Whoever thought that we would actually want mud? Yeah, that's your biggest fear. Is it is, but you know what? Mud can be your best ally in certain situations, and this is one of them. And, you know, this is just a simple way at how to make, you know, a, a more uh, harmonious color palette. It's by taking a little bit of every color and mixing it in putting it in a pile, mixing it up, and then adding it to all the the, uh, the primaries that, or the tube colors, I should say, that you have in your, in your palette, in your chosen palette. So even without knowing anything about color theory, you can create a harmonious palette just by using this method. You can pick a few, just a few of your favorite colors. Use this method 